Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Raise the Vibe with Liz. I'm your host, Liz Peterson, and today I am hosting the beautiful Hara Araramaya. Today, <laughs> she, he is a pleasure embodiment coach who works with women and the gender expansive community to birth a life governed by love, pleasure, and abundance. They walk hand in hand with clients as they shed societal conditioning, shame, guilt, and false beliefs around their bodies and sexuality. Formerly a burnt out registered nurse, dominatrix and sex worker, they have embraced their gifts to live in radiant alignment. They hold spaces through offering sacred sexuality, pleasure, shadow work and embodiment rituals to help clients fully reclaim their birthright to pleasure and abundance. Hara currently resides in Mexico and is continuously looking for ways to support and nurture the local community. Hara works in intimate group coaching settings and private one-on-one clients to facilitate healing and pleasure embodiment. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> so great to have you. Say your name for me. So everyone can... Hara Aramayo. Beautiful. Thank you so much. It is so great to have you here. I met you through a mutual friend of ours. Lacey Gerhai interviewed at the end of last year and it was beautiful to make that connection and gosh I love her so much she's such a soul sister and I know that you are too and I'm super excited to host you and have everything that you've been channeling on Instagram and in your work come through during this interview so thank you so much for being here. Mm, Thank you so much for inviting me here and having me here it is just a divine honor and The one thing that I want to start with is like, I, sometimes I talk with my eyes closed. It's just how my clear channel comes through. (laughs) So since some of you are on YouTube and you can see me and, um, you know, if I'm closing my eyes simply because I'm leaning into the nonverbal wisdom into my body's wisdom and talking through, um, from my body's experiences. Perfect. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Awesome. Why don't we start by having you share your journey up until today? Oh, damn, that's a big question. I am wondering where to start with that. Um, I guess in terms of like my journey of how I started offering this, this, um, this gift. Yes. To the world. Yeah. So I have been in a relationship with um, sort of on a constant deepening journey of reclaiming my sensuality, my sexuality, my body sovereignty ever since I was young, I feel like. And something that's coming through right now is, um, well, religious programming comes through right now. There's been a lot of conditioning around that because my family has actually been, um, in, in back in Indonesia, they were quite well known at the time in the church community. So something that I've always cultivated was around this culture and being a good girl, closing your legs, like talking and smiling and being super polite and all of this and sort of um, definitely no sticking my tongue out was like no go. It was nope, don't do that, bad girl. Like it, it's a real thing. And another thing that's also coming through right now, and of course there's multi different facets to how I ended up here. But something else that has come through right now is also um, sort of a, an experience of being shamed of just by being in my body at the time before I came to age, I guess, per se. I was about like 11 years old and, um, and my teacher in middle school had called a parent-teacher meeting because um because I he he held this meeting and voiced my parents that I was a distraction to the boys and to the teachers which was something that I yeah actually came through lately um and I know this might be bringing some feelings but I feel I feel it like I feel the chills right now just speaking to it um and they were speaking about this and I was just speaking to my fiance about it you know they were saying that I was a distraction to the boys and the teachers and number one I was 11 years old it, it wow. boggles my mind to how I was 11 years old and just er- erotic innocence, right? Com- completely being rugged out of my out of my bones. Like that's really what it felt like for me. And and the thing, the other pro- thing that I processed recently, because it's the journey of the deepening. And of course, like Liz, you're a part of it. Like people who ask you to speak on this has been a part of it because a part of the healing is being fully witnessed in it too, um, realizing and acknowledging that fully. So right now, as we speak, you know 
I think there's so much power in these spaces, but, and I think something that was unique that I just remember the other day was like that teacher that um, called the parent teacher meeting was a history teacher and the teacher that, um, and what happened was because why that teacher had called a meeting was because he was getting complaints from the students that my teacher was being inappropriate to me. And the teacher who was being inappropriate to me was actually a civics and the religious teacher. So he taught religion and he taught civics. So I think the fact that it was civics, religion, and um, the history teacher calling the parent teacher meeting, I think there's something like energetically, there's just a power message there about, oh, I'm just getting chills right now. It's just about the, I guess, like maybe something about colonization, patriarchy, like how we can continually like heal this further and further because realizing that the other day I was like, huh, I never thought about it that way, you know, the history and we like some of us who are really deep in activism work, like know how much history can be misconstrued, right? As we yeah. debunk it deeper and deeper between the tribal culture and like the colonization culture and all that. And it's about like, I'm here to really cultivate that inner sense of oneness um, each and every day and how to really mend that relationship in the most compassionate way. And somehow I think this is Oscar orchestrated to sensuality and sexuality and that will unfold I'm sure through our conversation today because this is just what wants to come through um, through my channel right now I think one of the deepest um, depth of my journey has been seeded through that pain point and it's about alchemizing that truly how can I now convert and transmute that experience to be something that I can embody a medicine that can maybe touch and heal others and knowing that yeah you're not alone and this there there's definitely something to this that is wanting to be brought forth um so that is something that's that came through when you asked me that question right let's Just, dive uh, into that a little bit more because it really is around i mean definitely like what i have been learning with my journey and my sexuality and sensuality and my personal pleasure is that it really is like unwrapping those belief systems that we grow up with, what we're taught by our parents and our social systems. So how can we further decolonize and um, like pull these belief systems out of our sexuality and our pleasure beings and stand more fully in who we, walk, who we are without hearing those things, you know, in our mind? those belief systems functioning under the surface? Uh, oh, I think this is like a deep nervous system reprogramming that gets to take place as well for us because mm -hmm. something that I realized, you know, ever since that experience, I had just contracted so much in my body because I know, like I didn't know for years that I was still holding that belief, right? That that deep innate belief that was implanted when I was 11 years old and sitting in that chair and hearing my teacher say that to me. and being that the fact that it first orchestrated because they were getting like from students getting, uh, voicing these complaints to the principal, like saying that, oh, um, Mr. So-and-so was touching, um, you know, this, like my, my schoolmate or whatever it was. And then I was the one that was being like coarse and being, and I was 11 years old. I don't know. So I think a part of it is just like, it's nervous system programming really, really is what is coming through right now. And also the fact that cultivating that deepening relationship within us and our bodies, like feeling safe in our bodies and a part of feeling safe in our bodies is holding that sensuality, that sexuality, because we are humans, right? Of course, we're sexual, we're sensual, like that's a part of us. That's, this is how we create. And to me, something else that's coming through right now is, um, I'm gonna get really wild here, but like there's like almost a programming <laughs> in society that really wants us to be separated from our sexual powers because truly that is how we create, right? Imagine if there's, there's a world that is full of, I mean, filled with human beings that are fully empowered in their sensuality, their sexuality. And the fact is like our sensuality has been so, what, what is the word? Like, um, oppressed? It's <laughs> oppressed, yeah, oppressed. And also like 
colonized in its own way yeah. because I feel like sensuality when it comes to true erotic innocence and sensuality it's about feeling good in our bodies and sometimes we are there's like this deep programming to, in society to like almost sexualize that if that makes sense like this is mm -hmm. something that that is yeah again like really coming on strong for it is like there is a deep programming around society to think that um sensuality is solely for the bedroom or things like that when it can really be just I'm feeling really turned on because I'm really excited about this project and I'm doing this podcast with you like oh my god it gets me excited in my body like my pussy is singing you know like it's <laughs> like why can't it be just that right which right. is something that yeah that came through through that whole experience was I because I was so innocent like at that time I mean I, I was 11 years old you know, I was just happy doing my thing. And I think the programming that really landed for me was, oh, somehow it had imprinted this deep programming. I'm not supposed to feel this good. And thus contracting and that to me, like how this relates to like sensual and sexual powers, like when we contract, we kind of dim our light. And when we're sensually embodied and we're like very radiant and we're comfortable in our sensuality, it's like, you emit this magnetism and now there's this deep programming around us, our culture. It's like, no, you want to be, you want to hide, you know, you don't want to be seen kind of like that. So. Yeah. yeah there really is a minimizing of oneself. You know, when you're pointed yeah. out objectified or made to, you know, feel shame around your experience or others experience of you, like taking on the shame of others. Oh Yeah. That's a big one too. That is a big one. Oh. Yeah. Just taking a moment to like anchor that. Yeah, many women have done that over the centuries. Mm -hmm. Taking on the shame of others as their own and holding yeah. the shame. Yeah, yeah. Along with their own shame. Oh my gosh, yeah, this is one of the things actually that is so prominent. I think our culture, especially for womb carriers, like people who are socialized as women growing up, assigned female at birth, we have this cauldron, right? Like I think about the pelvic bowl as the, the womb is like this creatrix cauldron. And a lot of us pick up pain and guilt and shame and store it there instead of being able to embody this as a juicy creatrix cauldron because of all these deep programming. And again, like really what it stands for, what it's showing us is just like this program around separation from each other. Like that's really what it is that is, mm -hmm. yeah, that has been coming through for me throughout this journey as well. Like there's this deep fear around and programming that is instilled being our sensuality and our sexuality almost like it's a taboo yeah. to make it easier for us to be repressed and oppressed. And, you know, when you kind of disconnect somebody from that creatrix energy, now you have the society that is easily controlled, right? Per se, like easily influenced, taken, their powers are taken away and they're not rooted in their sovereignty. So yeah, this is something that is, like, I, th I think there's a collective awakening in our society right now that is wanting to awaken this part of us that is sensual, that is sexual and be empowered in it and not make it this weird thing because it doesn't have to be. Yeah. And it is not. It is something so, so beautiful um, in many ways. And like, so beautiful when someone steps into their personal power, when they're feeling empowered. And that does come from that sensuality and sexuality, that creative space within ourselves where we're birthing ourselves into the world. Yes. Right. Oh, it's so true. It's, it's a constant journey of self-receptivity too. I feel like that's what it is. And as we're able to cultivate that deeper love and innate deep self-love for ourselves, then we can kind of begin to emanate it forward. And that sort of is what allows that room um, to take up space or basically what makes us radiant is that and our sensuality and our sexuality is such a part of us that has been 
long awaited to be awakened. I'm going to like change the words <laughs> the yeah. oppressed and things like that. It's just, you know, it's, it's here and it's arriving. And I really, I was getting a transmission um, late last night. Um, sometimes I sit in bed and ruminate on things. And I was just looking at these red roses and um, I'm deeply connected to the rose lineage and something that was coming through. It's like, you know, yeah, there's this, I, I don't know how many of you have been feeling like there's been a big, massive change in the collective. Yes. I mean, whew, you know, and something that was coming through was, yeah, we are being asked to really cleanse all the debris, all the little crevices, all the, all the little dust bunnies, like all the little bits of scraps inside of ourselves, because we are preparing our vessel for what is coming and I somehow feel like 2022 and I know we're in August right now which is the month of eight also and I, and I feel like there's mark the powers in this because it came through to me yesterday as I was giving this transmission I was like you know there's a power number on 1 1 and we're gonna get a little woo woo and like really channely psychic -y, but I was like counting the numerology behind that is that that's the frequency of eight and eight is the infinity and there's like definitely this divine calling in the world to be more embodied in that divine union state instead of the separation and a part of that of course sexuality will become a part of it and sexuality to me is like the red rose frequency it's the opening of that creatrix colder and that energy that our sexuality like when we're turned on that's how we create right that's how we create human beings and things like that so I just feel like whatever we're being prepared for like if any of you who are listening to this right now and just going through some really rough patch shit <laughs> uncensored like it, knowing and trusting that everything is a gift like you are being showed forth like everything is happening for you and that you are supported because this, I really do feel like this upcoming year is a big, big year of change. Like the new paradigm is here. It's not, it's not being birthed, like it, it is here. And now it wants to kind of come out and play. And a big part of it, I think is definitely reclaiming this divine sexual powers of us um, so that we can begin to create and weave that I love to say it cosmic matrix because it's really this reality that is governed by love and pleasure. And I feel that when we're fully in touch with our sexuality and our sensuality, then we can really cultivate that sense of divinely embodied love because it's something that we've been so, again, repressed. It's, 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 <laughs> it has yeah. waited to be awakened for so yeah. long, you know, and, I, and I've been seeing it on collective, like you've been talking about it, like there's, massive amounts of people that have been touching around the subject. So I think it's just so beautiful that we're all on this journey together. Yes, me too. And how lovely that it's not something that's functioning under the surface anymore, but out in the public functioning now, the divine feminine. You mentioned the rose lineage. So for those listeners who don't know, why don't you describe that a little bit for everybody, what the rose lineage is? Yeah, so the rose lineage. Um, so this is how I relate to the rose lineage. Like number one, if you think about a rose, you know, it can't be forced to bloom, right? It takes, it has, it takes its own time. It doesn't compete with other roses to bloom. It's soft. It's, I mean, it really looks like a pussy to me, <laughs> to be honest. You know, and um, and there's just like it's this divine compassionate medicine around the roses and also having the thorns knowing our boundaries and in that going back to the history of the rose lineage it's the lineage of magdalene hathor and isis and that's where the sacred temple arts was really birthed and this is sort of a i don't know why the word generation wants to come through uh, a lineage that was truly empowered and embodied in their like divine sexuality and their sensual embodiment and really cultivating this art of sacred temple arts, like where the body is your temple. And I've always been sharing, like the, one of the messages that I really, really want to share forth um, and have been feeling called to share into this world is the rain is starting and it's starting really hard right now. Awesome. Um, is that, yeah, our body is the sacred temple and our sexuality is our spirituality and our sensuality is our magnetism and our freaking orgasm is like the prayers to the god you know so 
one of the things that Rose lineage is big about is also just like cultivating this divine essence of pleasure and the divine feminine embodiment and being empowered through it's almost like a I want to say like it's it's inviting the sense of pleasure bonding instead of trauma bonding in in our society right now so this is something that this is how I relate to that lineage so I've been a deep devotee of Hathor mostly and Magdalene as well Isis yes in different ways um, and it's just been such a pleasure to bring their medicine forth into this world just cultivating that art of remembrance around compassion love juiciness, sensuality, eroticism, all of it, all of it. That's kind of like, you know, the, the short gist, but there's of course like such a deep, <laughs> a deeper um, spectrum to all of that, but that's sort of like the, the surface level. Yeah, how do we align with and reclaim those sacred portals? those archetypes, you know, and really bring those into our daily life. Mm. How do we reclaim that? So a word that's coming through right now is mm. reclaiming the sacred whore. Right on. And uh, yeah, and when I speak of the sacred whore, it's because a lot, even a lot of the words, you know, and it just, tuning into our bodies, I think more than anything, um, because number one, the word whore is origin originally, it, it means portal, just like the word prostitute is actually root rooted in a Greek word. I forgot what the actual word is, but it actually means the, um, the altar to serve God. So this is like, and the word sinner was actually somebody who follows the moon cycles. So I think like, really looking beyond the intellectuals beyond like our three-dimensional understanding and diving deeper into our bodies inner knowing the intelligence the non-verbal wisdom is really how we can begin to cultivate this healing forward and it's just trusting trusting our stories trusting our medicine is really honestly something that is coming through right now and just really deepening that trust and true art of self-sovereignty in our body's wisdom because your body is the altar and your body has all these stories and the divine morse codes to tell and just so much wisdom and the fact is like nobody ever holds the same stories right everybody kind of has something different to offer in this world and it really is just about like creating weaving that world from womb to womb. That's something that's coming through right now. Like just really like as we dive deeper into our nonverbal wisdom, we're getting in touch with our womb so that we can begin to create this world for together from that frequency of love. That's really what's, yeah. What makes, Gosh, what you just said made me think about um, something I've been experiencing too that you talked about the other day on Instagram. And I've been experiencing this desire <clears throat> to let go and to surrender. And you were talking about that a couple of days ago, or maybe last week. I, it's time is not linear for me these days, <laughs> but I'm experiencing the same thing too, just that releasing and letting go and surrendering. And I loved what you said about slowing down. So can you dive into that a little bit? Yeah. So yeah, slowing down. And that really is how, yeah. So when we want to lean into that nonverbal wisdom, we want to begin to cultivate trust in our bodies it really starts with the art of just simply slowing down, right? Because we live in the society that we've always been taught to like, time is money. Like I know I came from New York, this was a big thing. It was really a big thing. And when we slow down, there's so much wisdom that can come through with that because we're allowing ourselves to pause, stop and really feel and take that deep breath that a lot of us in society, like I wanna, I wanna ask, 
all of us right now who are listening to this, like feel into your asshole and see if you're clenching that because a lot of us walk around with clenched buttholes and actually severs our connection to source. And this is something that I really want to invite us all to be like, just being in that divine frequency of surrender, also relaxing your asshole. Like this is all intertwined because then you allow that connection to come through. It's almost like, ha, ah, now I can anchor down. And this is one of the magics that can happen when we pause, slow down, pause, breathe, feel, because then we can really truly feel the emotions. Like it's not this trauma-based response that we have, oh, this happens, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. It's not this algorithmic response. It's governed by your intuition instead of your mind. And I feel like this is just monumental because when you slow down, you allow yourself to root, connect back to source, and then you can expand, right? You can carry forth an action that is fully in alignment with what where your heart is at instead of coming from here or coming from a trauma-based response. Because when you slow down that nervous system, again, you're telling your nervous system, hey, it's okay. It's okay. Take a deep breath. And let's move from here. And now it can begin to really develop this clear route instead of it being just sort of like, okay, grabbing, grabbing things kind of just. So yeah, that's really, the art is slowing down. Never underestimate what can happen in a second. <laughs> just even one breath. Right, it's so true. So true. Let's talk about, you are a pleasure embodiment coach, teaching everyone about body's wisdom. So let's talk mm. about that. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Pleasure, 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 pleasure. I feel that when we give ourselves permission to cultivate that sense of pleasure in our body, just even by brushing our skin and just really feeling it. <laughs> again, it really, what is coming through right now is just again, like safety in your body, like being safe to feel good. That is what it is. And being in your pleasure, it really, to me, it's like, yeah, when you're in pleasure, I actually just made this little diagram, you know, it's about knowing the seed of your creation right like when you have an idea to be birthed like where are you birthing that from because there's there's a way to a lot of us that are in society have been conditioned around pressure scarcity and that creates really like lack like it creates more scarcity right and when there's pleasure and love as a seed that creates sort of grace and ease because then you're able to be compassionate and you pra um, practice your process whatever it is grace ease and then that ultimately really creates this true wealth and abundance frequency which is really it's like it's really the frequency of love, right? And so this the seed gets to be coming from love instead of this pressure driven culture. So, and that to me has been really monumental because I do believe that a lot of us here, you know, and I speak to burnout culture deeply around this because through that art of cultivating inner pleasure and safety within the pleasure, we can begin to trust it again. Because I think, I feel that truly a lot of us just has that connection severed in the past, like at some point where we're like, oh, it's not supposed to feel good, right? I mean, earning money is supposed to be really hard. Like you're supposed to work really hard. You're supposed to pick up another shift and this is the way it is. Or marriage is not supposed to feel good after five years you know so it's there's so much so many elements to it yeah exactly it kind of brings it like the, uh. but i'm like you get to be in pleasure like follow the pleasure and honestly this has come to me because during the pandemic um i actually got covid um and at that time i was in new york city and i was 
just working really hard as a nurse. I was working in the ICU and operating room and it was all pressure, pressure, pressure. And when I went to sleep during COVID and woke up three days later, and I, I thought I wasn't gonna make it. Like it, it was deep, it was really deep. And I woke up and I just thought, you know, if I didn't make it, like, would I have been happy with the way I was living before? And the real, I realized the answer was absolutely fucking not. And after that, me and my fiance just really made it sort of a, sort of like just like a vow, like a vow to the self to like follow the pleasure, like always just do what feels good to us right now. And that sort of led into us driving cross country on this journey and yeah, and doing what it is that we do now. We offer our God-given gifts, which is what feels in alignment. And that wouldn't have happened if I didn't cultivate that deep relationship with trusting the pleasure, following the pleasure. And that alone is a deep practice in itself, you know, because sometimes you, you, like your mind starts to make things up. But I think, yeah, I feel that when we cultivate this deeper relationship with trusting our pleasure, it really just the miracles and the magic that can happen in our lives just blow our minds because it lights up our hearts like that that's something that's really how I describe it because I like even in the just the last week the connection that I've made like even being here with you right now just brings this deep sense of gratitude because I couldn't imagine <laughs> this today actually was the exact day that we arrived in Portland like just moved cross country and picked up our bags and just really followed in divine faith <laughs> seeing what happens and that's awesome again yeah it just gives me chills to think about that and how far it's gone just from this year clocking into the divine payroll <laughs> that is a beautiful birthing story and how wonderful for people to be able to hear that because i think that a lot of people on a global scale are experiencing this then they're starting to question, you know, am I happy with my life? Do I need to reorganize my priorities? What brings me joy? You know, there's so many gifts that have come out of so much tragedy around the globe, mm -hmm. right? And it's really the gifts are coming yeah. back into a state of pleasure and joy and stepping out of things that took the, those away, right? Because everybody's reprioritizing what's important to them mm. and realizing that those outer things were taking away from that right yeah. gosh that's amazing that's a beautiful yeah. journey and part of that process was developing the monarch temple yes yes it was awesome oh, been... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah, the monarch temple, it's its own entity um, being birthed into this realm, like into this world. Um, it has been such a humbling journey for me. Completely, again, being in divine trust, like you said, being in true surrender, because I really had no idea. How, like, I, I knew I wanted to create something, but I wasn't really sure. <laughs> I wasn't really sure, you know, what I knew was going to work, clocking to my shift, right, at, at, like with nursing and just you know the thunderstorms um i love but, that there's a thunderstorm going on right now <laughs> i know i'm like oh my gosh uh, yesterday too like this is uh, every time uh, i've been noticing every time i'm about to start a transmission this has been coming forth every every time without fail um universe is like listen i know <laughs> it's like, here's the charge here's the electric charge and confirmation yeah i think the monarch temple is Oh my God, my heart. She is an entity birth fully from love because I remember this, this business, right? This, um, I don't even like to call it a business because it honestly is just an entity wanting to deliver this medicine forth into this world. And it, it started off from me just like creating a like $11 Yoni themes. That was how it started. Cause I started bringing tea blends into different, um, I, I was talking to the plants. Like this has been one of my gifts growing up was I taught, I spoke to the plants. The plants were my deepest teachers and that's how I connected with the rose medicine 
before I even knew like this was a whole Magdalene Hathor Isis lineage and all that it was just my grandmother had this beautiful rose bush garden and I had just always talked to these roses and it has taught me so much wisdom and compassion and as I was talking to the plants and of course herbalism became a path for me and I kind of just started to offer herbs in different ceremonial spaces then people started to ask me oh like you know do you create the tea plants things like that and I was like yeah yeah I do and I also do this thing where I steam my pussy with herbs like if you want that also I also like I can totally like get you into that too and that sort of just led into just contributing a womb healing in different spaces again like awakening wombs because I really believe that in each and every awakened womb there's a whole universe awaiting to be birthed because it's never about exiting the matrix uh, I think a lot of people in spirituality now talk about let's go exit the false matrix and exit the 3d I was like what if it's just about rewriting the relationship maybe you know the false matrix governed by one thing and then now we can create something that is truly rooted in love and pleasure and this is something that the monarch temple was created was just from that deep love and cultivation around this mission to bring maybe it's not so much a mission but a vision and just like inviting people to be empowered to be in their bodies and all parts of their bodies and trusting their bodies cultivating this deeper relationship around what brings them joy right because that really is what pleasure is it doesn't even have to be an orgasm trip 5,000 in the bedroom it can be just this divine innocence around oh yeah like this makes me really feel really good and turned on and I'm going to do this yes and creating the monarch temple was fully governed by that and in full trust of the process and it has taught me so much around unconditional love and for and yeah and perhaps somebody who's listening to this is wanting to create their own business and it is like what you said Liz like true surrender I think entrepreneurship has been the biggest route to surrender and acceleration to spiritual growth and deepening that relationship with source and trust because you just never know you know and it's about versatility it's divine trust it's being with the ebbs and the flows trusting your cycles seasons and again and the whole time I just cultivated this deep relationship with the monarch temple as it transmits the, these codes through me literally anchoring this idea into something that I'm sharing in the temple containers as well as that you know you can the serpent medicine like you can be the snake shedding your skin in the mud and there's this expression around like sometimes you're in the mud right I was like well you can be the snake in the mud gliding through like in the beautiful rice fields of Bali that's where I'm from so it's a vision that's always come through to me from the monarch temples like you're gliding through this nourishing beautiful mud in the rice fields of Bali just being nourished as you're shedding the skin so that when you're ready to emerge it's this beautiful radiant goddess like of you because now you've been nourished by the mud and it's about trusting that everything is truly happening for you and there is room to play and how to somehow like always transmute that pain to pleasure. It really is just from coming from that divine trust, like really trusting that everything is a gift. Like I really love that you spoke around the gift of something and the gift of everything. Like what is the gift of everything? Because I really believe that, yeah, it's all happening for you. It's never, nothing's ever happening to us unless we make it so. And we can choose to really take back that power and roll with it <laughs> it's really um yeah. and that's really how monarch temple came to be <laughs> it's just through <laughs> trusting 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 each time i hear a big yes right <laughs> a big hell yes, <laughs> yes. <love> that. <laughs> that's awesome you said something earlier erotic innocence so unwrap that a little bit, define that for our listeners. Mm, erotic innocence. That truly is simply just, honestly, it is just about really feeling good in something that you're cultivating, that you're creating. 
And it's sort of like what I've mentioned before. It's like this feeling around being turned on to, about certain projects, right? For example, like being on this podcast, like, oh my God, this really excites me. Like that to me is erotic energy, it's erotic innocence. It's it's not necessarily, and that's the thing too. Like, I think there is this beautiful room, this invitation around really debunking that concept of erotic, always having to be in a bedroom concept sort of thing. Like, cause how we do one thing is how we do everything, right? So I think that all of it ultimately is intertwined, is very together. And it's just a question around, is society ready to really integrate this concept of divine union to really embody that forth? Because it can become really scary. Like for some people, like I can imagine this can feel triggering or activating. Like, what do you mm-hmm. mean? Like what it means? Erotic <laughs> innocence, like being turned on, like, I don't know, like I'm supposed to do that. So it really is just about inviting um, room for, yeah, I'm allowed to be really happy and excited and just like, ah, like really cultivating that relationship. And oh my God, I'm really excited about this. I'm really turned on and this really, makes me want to show myself it really wants me to open up my body to whatever it is that is being created and there's such a difference to creating from contraction and creating from a state of openness right when we're Mm -hmm. radically activated I I like to think about it like there is no penetration that needs to take place because our bodies are just so open to receive it and it's 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 like constant when I speak like it it's constant sex like it's constant sacred energy exchange like between us and the universe and it's about cultivating this art of inner divine union like trusting that yeah we like all sides of me are all one including what's in the bedroom and what's outside the bedroom god yeah i really (laughs) believe that it is like a union with divine of course we are divine but bringing in those ideas that we have and birthing them out it's the penetration of the ideas Mm -hmm. and the receiving of the ideas right and then the sharing the birthing of those ideas and I really god let's unwrap more about bringing those old belief systems that our sex and sexuality have to be in the bedroom and let's take them out of the bedroom right like unwrap those belief systems you know, bring them out into life. It's not just in the bedroom, right? So let's talk about that more. Like bringing that belief system out or break, like unraveling that belief system be able to bring our sex and sexuality into everyday life out of the bedroom. Yeah, because I really feel like, you know, this is beautiful because I mean, as I mentioned before, sex, sacred, energy exchange, S-E-X. It's this cultivation around when we can really be in tune during our energetic exchanges, different interactions with people. Right? For example, like me and this podcast with you, it's like really cultivating that full intention and presence and being able to be here with somebody being a divine witness it's because it it really is cultivating that sex outside of the bedroom right because think about it it's what makes sex so good it's like when the partner when the other one is so present so open to receiving being able to witness you it's then you can kind of open up be vulnerable be seen and heard fully and what a beautiful thing it is that if we can cultivate that behind the doors and then bring that out and that element of union allows us to really unite that because truly again how we do one thing is really how we do everything um it's not something that a lot of people like to hear but I really and not even me sometimes I don't even like to hear that completely you know but um but there is definitely room around that yeah like how can we bring more presence and the art of slowing down and really just questioning like you know where am I just fucking through life or where am I also like and where am I making love in all the things that I do because when we cultivate this art of sacred energy exchange being really in tune to our pleasure it becomes easier for us to say yes and to say no and then that kind of leads into a more divine alignment because I really 
I feel that something that is really true is that we are always in alignment. <laughs> we're always in alignment, even if we're going through a shit show, because the truth is, it's just showing us what is going on inside. So it really is just about like, how can I shift to pleasure and all the things that I do? Like, does it feel good for me to say yes to this person? Maybe not so much. Let me, let me just slow down and tune into that. And I will give you an answer tomorrow. And that can be a full yes, like a full body yes or full no, maybe this isn't in alignment. You know, so that's that's sort of like what one of my yoga teachers actually said, and I really love this concept. Um, you know, he's always said, you know, it's not about what you do on the mat, it's about how you take it off the mat. And this is sort of the same. And something that um, this practice of sacred sexuality has really taught me is again, like that art of slowing down, being patient to even like having, cultivating that deep sense of safety when essentially when our pussy opens up, right? When it's ready to receive <laughs> and it's sort of the same. And again, like the medicine of the rose too, like it's just, it's about really honoring the divine time, like honoring the faces and giving that time to bloom fully without any force. So yeah, bring that out of the bedroom. <laughs> yes. It reminds me too of something else you said, um, that our bodies being the abundance altar. Yes, yes, it is. Oh. Yeah, it really is. Our body is the abundance altar because as we're in, we're coming closer to a divine alignment, right? To what is in full body, full, fuck yes, body alignment. We're clocking into the divine spiral. This is something that I've, <laughs> this is honestly one of the elements that I've really cultivated as I birthed the monarch temple was just keep reminding myself and keep recentering myself that it is clocking into the divine spiral when I follow the yes, the pleasure. And as we follow the pleasure and as we allow our bodies to open up more and more, because when we follow the pleasure and we honor the pleasure, we cultivate that relationship with our body like it's safe for you to feel in pleasure and it is okay to open up we're allowing the divine to come through we're allowing the abundance to come through and and something that I really love is just like this understanding around love is money and money is love and money loves to come where love is and abundance love to come where love is you know love is just such a magnetic force of energy which is also a part of our erotic innocence or when we're truly in love with something it's like there's this excitement almost like going on a new date and with somebody it's like oh my gosh yeah like I'm so excited to receive you to that and all of a sudden there's time there's space it opens up and opens up different connections and that truly is really what brought me here into connecting with you today because would we have connected if I didn't follow that pleasure you know it's just that it's been a humbling journey for sure. And our body really is the abundance out here because the one thing also is like, as we trust deeper in our bodies and we allow the stories to, ski, uh, to speak, like that book, um, The Body Keeps the Score. Uh -huh. And it really holds all the memories, I think like in, not just in this lifetime and for those of you who believe in past lives as well, it holds all of these divine magic. And as we allow ourselves to lean into this beautiful vessel, and trusting cultivating that relationship it tells stories and it has the codes and it has your medicine to share into this body because a friend of mine has said it so beautifully um natalie she has said to me you know life is a ceremony and you are the medicine like our body really is the medicine because we get to share that and we're completing that um really though was the web weaving just by clocking into our hearts sending this electrical pulse and just creating this, yeah, this beautiful cosmic web. Yes, ah, oh, I love that. <sighs> Man, just visualizing that web and your mm. contribution to that web, right? Oh, yeah. And your contribution too, because there's, and that's the thing too, right? None of us are offering something that is exactly the same. So mm -hmm. I think 
there must be a lot of entrepreneurs that are going to listen to this podcast yeah. maybe but it's <laughs> something that's also wanting to come through is like remembering like you know what is coming from you will never be delivered by somebody else yeah. never and because it wants to come out it must be asked to because you want to birth it it must have been asked by the universe to come out to be delivered and therefore there's absolutely no reason to why you shouldn't be support it if you just fully follow that urge follow that pleasure follow the surrender and trusting like there's no other way that you're not going to be supported because i have been on this journey and miracles have happened and it's just like there's no way to explain it yeah there's no way to explain it 100 agree you get on the journey and it just becomes this life of its own this creation where you don't know what it's going to become but you know that you're creating something you know yeah. <laughs> it's the most amazing yeah. feeling and then you step into that gratitude and that joy and that magic and you're communing with the divine at least i do and i yeah, do the practice daily practice yeah. and then more abundance and i'm not just talking about money all abundance you know, mm -hmm. starts flowing freely to you. So then it's this, you get to experience like what brings you joy in the world. Like when my client, you know, when I have a client and it's an amazing healing or I'm doing a podcast with you and it's an amazing conversation and then the gratitude and joy that I feel. And then that just yes. creates more flow from being in the flow. Oh, it really is a magical place. Yeah, so it opens up the channels. That's really what it is and allowing the support to come through more and more and more each time. And also that like, you know, trusting that sometimes the evidence isn't always there right away, but it's about like tuning into the feeling first, like tuning into the trust, the surrender, and like, it's like communing with the divine and allowing it to land when it lands and trusting that it will land in divine timing and Yes. Yeah. And these feel goods, they just keep attracting abundance. And like you said, abundance in all the ways, like abundance in community, like that honestly has brought me so much joy more than anything, like through the Monarch Temple, because it has been calling in so many people that want to bring this medicine, like spread it and really let it be seen. Um, and that to me is abundance in itself, just like having these beautiful connections with you, with Lacey, with Jamie, even like these, are, I'm like, I would have never known any of you, <laughs> you know, and or anything about the amazing work that Lacey's bringing with money and that Jamie's bringing and the activism work and you, like your amazing posts around sexuality and Kundalini rising, like lady, it's just been like, wow, like it's, it's really incredible to see and be able to witness others be so fully embodied in their medicine and i feel like there's so much beauty in that more than anything in the world that to me is like abundance and wealth for sure <laughs> yes and i think the one thing i love that stepping into your medicine and i think the more people that can do that the more elevated the planet becomes right because people are living their medicine i love yeah that. that's beautiful that is the ascension, I feel like, you know, as we yeah. feel safe in our bodies. And this is where I kind of like really want to anchor in that invitation again. It's like, yeah, the, the way to ascend is, is also providing the room to descend and also just cultivating the safety around the body and feeling good in our bodies again and again so that we can access those higher multidimensionality um, frequency and allow it to land here, right, on Earth, basically. Mm -hmm. just, yeah. Yeah, because even like you've said before, like our bodies, our pleasure, our divine guides. Yes. Oh, I love that. They are, they are, they are. Divine guides. Yeah. Oh, so I'm going to segue now, you know, from this, because you also, um, you work with your clients shedding societal conditioning, shame, guilt, false beliefs, you know, offering, you know, holding space through, through sacred sexuality, pleasure, shadow work, embodiment rituals. But you're also, there's a role of gender in your transmissions as well, which I think is beautiful and very healing for the planet. And it's, and it is transmissions of healing and honoring polarities. So I want yeah. you to discuss that. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. So yeah, I guess this ties into my identity, uh, my ident like, cause I came out as agender um, earlier. Oh, that's been like, that, that was last year. Wow, time flies. Um, so as I was journeying through the realms of sacred sexuality and womb healing, I had come to realize I was actually agender. And that journey really was more than just about, you know, female, male, or, or like the, um, the activism movement around it. Because to me, it was, it was something that I understood from when I was a child. Like I never understood the concept of gender and never really landed in my body and has been really a unique concept to my lang my language my first language didn't have pronouns so it was very unique for me to learn english with pronouns and of course a lot of the latin based languages had pronouns right so the way i understand these these gender polarities as i was coming out um reclaiming that agender because i understood it as the concept of gender actually somehow relating to the concept of separation between us and God. This was like how, like the deeper understanding of it was this is what came through. And something that um, has alchemized through my journey around gender exploration and things like that, you know, I, I think that a lot of us has, have been limited through our gender expression, um, yeah, our gender expression, the way our, we experience ourselves and, express our creativity, our gender expression, like how we dress and things like that, because it is our way of creating the experience of how we want to be seen and how, what we get to create into this world, right? It's a, it's an unlimited form of expression, like how we dress, what we love to buy, how we love to shop. And a lot of it are so programmed around, okay, girls like pink become a nurse good mother and if you're a boy love baseball love blue becomes the businessman the doctor or girl nurse like there there's these so many restrictions when I'm like we're humans we're more than just these algorithmic existence and the through realizing uh, through like really anchoring in that concept fast forward now has really led me into this concept around being able to uplift that binary concept not only allowed me to honor all the polarities without any judgment. And I feel like that's really how we get to create um, divine union is through really allowing all the polarities to show itself without any judgment and just the process of honoring it and still allowing it to express anyway. And that's really then how we can create this divine union. And with that also, then comes if I was to honor all of my processes and just honor all the divinity inside me, all the different parts, then I am therefore the creator of my own experiences to whatever that is. Because then you kind of take this power back from being so put in boxes. Instead, I'm going to now create my own experience. And of course, this is not a push to everybody to all of a sudden not change their pronouns or whatever it is, but it's just been what's what I'm calling calling for this just to see what has been instilled. Like the the deep programming around gender assignment is really like quite profound because something that I've um, also experienced was I shared I was a, a nurse as well and I was in the labor and delivery um, suite and actually in, in Washington in Shelton and I was there delivering a beautiful baby, a vessel. And what I noticed was the first thing that everybody asked when the, the pregnant person, the woman, the human being is in the suite, I, they'll ask, oh, what are you having? What are you having? And to me, it's like, why is it, what are you having? Are you having a meatball salad? Like what, what is the fixation? You know, I, yeah. and to me, it was just like, this is so interesting. Like I was just observing those feelings and what came through to me as I was in the labor and delivery suite. And it was such a beautiful process. And I saw 
I, I actually saw the spirit come down. Like it was this beautiful blue tube coming into the operating room. Like it was just a crazy experience and magical, magical experience in itself. And at the same time, I remember being on t- in front of that computer, having to assign um, the gender assignment, male or female, and then me. And what was going through my body at that time was just like, there was a freeze response and I had to really ask myself, like, what's that about? And what came through was, you know, as I checked this box, I am literally putting that person in the algorithmic existence that our society has really programmed us to fit into adhering to what it is based on the genitalia that the person is birth, um, birth with. And I think, and that to me, brought me almost so much deep grief because I'm like I don't want to be a part of this that like just what if that person was trans or what if that person was a non-binary you know it's it's really like it's it blows my mind and just brings feelings on my heart in my heart right now I just want to acknowledge that because we speak of the rose medicine and one of the elements of the rose medicine is womb healing and the womb and the throat is very connected and our gender expression is our creativity right our shakti our sexuality our sensuality our gender expression is subjective it's something that it also comes from the womb and for somebody to assign the gender to me, that was taking their voice away right away at birth before they could even speak to what it is that they're experiencing. And to me, that, you know, how this speaks to society, it's like questioning around, you know, we, a lot of us, especially for those of us who are socialized as women, like go through this period around reclaiming our voice, right? But a lot of us collectively really have had that power taken away ever since before birth, just through by simply gender assigning, because then you get put in a box, parents start buying the pink and the blues. And it's not to, like, I'm not here to make you feel bad or make anybody whoever's listening to this to feel bad in that, but like take this from a place of empowerment, you know, like the um, attunement and awareness there, there is a way to shift this. And I don't know exactly what that way is yet. It hasn't, I feel like as a collective a society, like the language also gets to grow and expand even more as we kind of decolonize the space around gender assignment concept, because I truly feel that that has been the brim and the seed of all separation in our human programming was this, gender assignment and again like just taking our voice away before we could even speak right right oh wow that's deep i feel it and it it goes even beyond voice where you're assigning who someone is before they're able to express who they are as a human being (laughs) I haven't spoken about this in a long time. So thank you for asking me about it. It's just like, that's powerful. Wow. Yeah. There, and there's like so many things around that with the medical field and there's so much to say yeah. for sure. Oh, you'll have to come back. We'll have a whole discussion. Yeah, I know. About <laughs> I think that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> if there's one thing that you would like to leave our listeners with today, what would that be? What would you like to share? Cultivating trust with your cycles is something that's coming through right now. Honoring your process, your emotions, knowing that they're all a gift. They're all beautiful in some way, even in the greatest depths of all pains. Like keep cultivating the trust. This is happening for me. And if something is not working out, trusting that it's not working out because I'm being shown a better way to really really go toward where it may feel good you know and if it doesn't feel good leave it you get to be celebrated you get to be in a space where you feel fully in your body in your pleasure celebrated and just emanate that light from within and that's something that's really coming through right now and again just of course that classic message around slowing down 
breathing, feeling it all, rooting, and then expanding from that space. I love that. Thank you. That was beautiful. And how can people reach you? How can they find you and work with you? They can find me on Instagram, which is I am i.m.hara or the monarch temple.com. And it just has all of the info over there. So, and of course, through you as well. Yeah. So thank you so much for this. Awesome. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. And thank you. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Sweet. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Again, this is Raise the Vibe with Liz. I'm your host, Liz Peterson, and you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Raise the Vibe with Liz and my website at Liz's Healing Touch. Thanks for joining us, everybody, and get out there and raise the vibe. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.